Okay, so I've got Alex Trompeter in the room and we're talking about Shatska 6. Uh, so we've got a nice case here. Uh, talk me through this one. This looks high energy. Yeah, pretty high energy. So this guy is in his 50s. He's uh, quite a big lad um, and he jumped out a first floor window because his house was on fire. Oh wow. So he's got no other injuries. He's not burnt or anything like this, but it's, this is a you know fall from two, three times your own height. Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking at this and immediately you can see this is the ambulance view um, or ED view. He's got an inflatable splint on, but it's kind of a proximal tibial explosion. Yeah. The joint's not too bad, and I can yeah. see, you know, he's probably got two fairly decent chunks of condyle, yep. but the bits that are scaring me in this are, there's massive metaphodiaphyseal comminution, yep. um, and the tuberosity is probably a separate piece in this Ooh, as well. Yeah, good point. And okay, that, so that's, that's this guy here, yeah, right? and that's something you've got to be really aware of, because because that's going to be something that you need to control, and, and think about how you're going to do that in this context of fixing this as a whole. Okay, great. So when you're, when you're treating a, a, an injury like this, yeah. it's actually much more, it's much less about the articular reconstruction and much more yeah. about the soft tissue management. Because often in plateaus, we are, we're all about the where does this fragment go, yeah, where yeah. does that fragment go? That's no, this is, this, is a, this is one that's gonna hurt you if you go too early. It's gonna possibly blister up over the next couple of days. Wouldn't be surprised if they got a compartment syndrome or had some sort of neurological injury looking at the fibula fracture there. Yep, yep. You know, all these things you've got to be aware of. Um, they might well get spanned or they just get left in a, a cricket pad splint, but they're going to need, you know, timing's going to be right. And then when you're going to attack this, you've got to think about which way you're going to attack it. From a, from a um, principles point of view, we're going to try and get the joint right. We're going to kind yep. of try and get the joint stable. And then we're going to try and align the joint and the shaft together. Yep. You know, it doesn't matter which technique we're going to do, that's going to be the principle of what we're going to do. What Understood. we want to do is do that without an infection and without a complication. Yeah. Okay. Just to be clear, uh, this guy here, as you say, is a vacuum splint, not a yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. So this is a closed injury. Closed injury. Yeah. Okay. So this is what you would call closed complex. In other yeah. words, it's closed, but it's but, but only as long by as by a couple of epidermal cells. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, okay. until the minute you stick your knife in it, this is going to behave not... just like an open fracture. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's massively right. degloved internally. Right. All that. Okay. So I've got I've got some CT, which d seems to show. Uh, exactly what you're saying. We've got yeah. two bits of condyle. There they are. This guy and this guy. Yeah. Um, uh, but the it's, thing that's kind of st that's alarming me is 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 probably this one here. Just yeah. all of these fragments. It's that kind are of just, bone soup, isn't it? It's yeah. just literally a, a bag of mush in the middle. That's probably the bottom end of his tuberosity there. Uh, and that's this guy here. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah, and you can see as you come up to the joint, the tuberosity sort of components as it's you come either, up. Either him or him. Yeah. Hard to so, say, So the it? tuberosity is definitely detached and that's going to need thinking about. And the big challenge, if you've got this much comminution, is what are you going to attach it to? If you're going to fire a screw into it, where's that screw is, going is, to go? Is there a back cortex? There isn't a posterior catch. cortex here. Yes. So this is a real consideration. Yep. And then when you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh, is this an internal fixation or an external fixation case? You've got to come up with your decision-making algorithm in that situation. Yep. Okay, great. And it's a terrible it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, recon, but don't worry about it. Let's, let, let's just run through it. I mean, uh, for, for just uh, that's what we've got. I'm afraid it's um, all so we've got. So we're spinning around. I'm seeing that tuberosity yep. fragment that you're talking about, this guy here. Yep. I'm also seeing two condyles, which are good fragments, but yep. they're not quite the same orientation, exactly. are they? They're, exactly. not, they're, not, they're not where they should be. Yep. If, I, if, I, if you dial that backwards, this, this dude here... Yep. Uh, uh, this, he's pointing downhill. He's pointing downhill, yep. just, just there. Yep. And the other guy... On the other side, which is, sorry, where are we? We're just here. Yeah, he's going uphill. He's going uphill, yeah. He's kind so of, kind of well, he's, like probably, this. he's probably about the right. right. The last yeah, one's probably it. about right, isn't he? Exactly. So, and it would be very easy just to go clamp yeah. and have, as you say, exactly. that kind of thing Exactly. Going. Okay, so my question to you now. You've got these CTs, yeah. and one of your trusted colleagues, who's a good surgeon, mm -hmm. says, uh, look, uh, you know, it's a horrible, the soft tissues are terrible. I want to put an external fixator on it right now. I want yeah. to put a spanning X fix yeah. on this because the soft tissues are hideous. And you're, you're, and, he's, and he also says, I'd like to put a couple of screws across the joint yeah. while I do it um, so that that's kind of taken care of yeah. and then we can sort out the rest later. What's your take on that? 
I think I think the the couple of screws. So the X fix, if it needs it, is fine. And there are people that don't like X fixes. There are people that do use them. I think if you're going to span this, we we said this before. I go straight down the front. I yeah. keep it really simple. I get length. I get control of the soft, soft tissues, and that's fine. Yeah. I think the issue around putting some screws in the joint, like putting the joint to bed, yeah, and then we can come back and fight that another day. My anxiety is if they're not going to be the one fixing that. Yeah is are they gonna get the joint right? We talked about this sort of, the rotation of the condyles relative yes. to each other. And if I'm gonna fix this and I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna frame it or something yeah. like that, have they got the screws high or lower and are they right. gonna block my wires in due course? Are they gonna interfere yeah. with any of that? Great. What size screws, all of those things. Those things. So it's yeah. a bit like the fibula in a pylon. If you're not gonna be the one doing it, just leave it alone. Yeah, okay. But do you find that if let's say you didn't get to fix this till three weeks down yeah. the line, would you be upset, oh, get down, and I'm gonna have to put that those articular block back together again now? Would have been so much easier if, to do it on day one. It would have been, but I think if this had come across my radar, I would have made myself a bit. I think if you know what you're doing, you can put the joint to bed. If you're, if you're not gonna be someone who's gonna be happy to manage this injury as a whole, you yep. need to speak to the right person. Great. So there's no problem with doing the joint early and the metadiaphysis late. That's a common thing, and I'll do that a lot of the time in the open injuries, that sort of stuff. But I think you need to know the injury yeah. and know where you, you're going to go. You've got to be the guy doing the definitive yeah, exactly. if you're going to do the, the injury. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Um, okay, so those are the... So you did get next fix by yeah. the looks of things. And, uh, you know, when you when you look at that, it looks okay, doesn't it? It, it does. Doesn't, it doesn't it's look not too, too bad. terrible. It's pretty well. It's out to length quite nicely. Yeah, yeah the tube, we know the tuberosity is off. We know the condyles are split. And we know that we've got this sort of mush in the middle. Yeah. Um, it's fixable. Yeah. It's definitely it fixable. Really it's gone, but you can imagine people being really tempted just to stick a clamp on, yeah. you know, boom, boom, and shoot a, a screw, shoot a screw a and then screw. slide a plate in or two. <laughs> Happy days, it's all good. Absolutely uh, right. So, yeah, yeah you know, there's, okay. there's no How, right way. Uh, you've brought a lot of attention to the tuberosity, yeah. and, and, and here it is, it's a big, big piece, isn't yeah. it? Pretty, I, I don't know where it ends at the top, but it comes right down like so. Exactly. How likely is that to actually flip up and disappear? Is that really a thing that happens? I don't think, well, so I think in the in a big piece like this, it's probably less likely. If they're a smaller piece or they've dissociated massively on the x-rays, you yeah. can sometimes see them migrate a bit. Yeah. But it's it's more about, it will confer, it probably won't let you get a stable construct at the end of the operation. You may have some subluxation of the knee, you may have some malrotation, they're all other things. It's a good read for a general good reduction okay, as well. Okay, great. Great, yeah, nice. And of course, you were talking about, you know, could we maybe fix it? Uh, and you get a great screw from here, yeah. but would you find a posterior cortex back oh, here? Exactly. Probably not until no. you get right down here, in exactly. which case a screw doing this isn't it's, really... It's not going to be massive. Yeah, well, you could plate the tibial tuberosity anteriorly, and yes. I've done that with a little tension band plate before. Yeah. Like, look, but, what, so like a 2.7? Yeah, a little mini frag, low profile plate anteriorly, tension band it. But then you're into the scenario of, hang on a minute, I'm going to be needing medial condyle plate, lateral condyle plate, maybe three, yeah. four plates around the top of a tibia. And this heavy bristle mm. tibia, yeah. It's, yeah. a, it's already been assaulted quite heavily. Yeah. Okay, so this is what it got. What, what was the timing on this? Where were we? So like this was weeks? about, yeah, about 10 days, two weeks down the line. He just yeah. sat, let the tissue settle. So we've done the reduction, like you said. It's not 100%, but they're pretty good condyles. We've got two fairly good views across the joint. Yeah. Little tip if we're talking about that malrotated, so you've got to look at the lateral. Yeah. And if you need to, you can drive a K wire into one condyle and kind of joystick like, it. Like steer exactly. It, like driving a and, truck. And rotate them relative to each other and then fix it with your wire. People will be wondering, how do you know which one's right in order to steer well, them right? Well, as we talked about earlier, you know, we. I think so long as they're pretty good and collinear on your lateral view and you've worked hard for that lateral view of the femoral condyles overlapping, yeah. then you're going to be pretty good. Okay. And let's not forget, if you're in a position where the condyles have been blasted apart yeah. and the legs exploded, yeah. it, a couple of degrees ain't going to make uh, uh, a uh, massive uh, uh, difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, fine. Fine, but making them the same yeah. is, is important. And the width here is restored. I think width is a really important bit yep. in plateau surgery because it's one of the things yeah, we can really is, control. Yeah. I can't control the cartilage taking a pasting, yeah. but I can control the width of the knee. I think the width of the knee infers massive stability to the construct at the yep. end of it as well. Totally agree. When, just talk about width. Do you, do you reference the lateral uh, cortex against this? or against this, I, I, just, just, to, just to be utterly <laughs> pernickety. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and this is really important, because in some knees, if you go here to here, there is an offset. 
There isn't in a normal knee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I look exactly, has this lined up with, essentially it should just kiss the, the, the lateral epicondyle. Yeah. That's to me where I think it's right. The other thing is if you rotate the knee slightly, you'll see a different view of that at all times. Yes. But, but broadly speaking, you want to be just kissing it. This is an osteophyte here. Um, yeah. I suspect. So actually, it, 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 you will see a little offset between the lateral femoral yeah. condyle. Okay, fine. Okay, oh, we, oh, they've got a frame, of course. Yeah. Right, tell me about... Uh, so, uh, uh, there's, there's several things in this frame. I know, oh, you put a frame on, and then yeah. everyone kind of switches off at that exactly. point. But there are some technicalities around putting a frame on. Yeah. Number one, your wires. How close can you... Are you strict about putting those wires not too close to the joint, or do you not really believe all that stuff about the it being I think, I think with good, so I don't massively worry about it, with good wire technique, so these, again, anyone who's done a frame or, or any of these things, you know, we're really careful when we're putting the wires in, we're cooling the wires, we're doing yeah. pulse drilling, um, and that is important. It sounds like, oh, the frame guys are being anal again about yeah. their bloody K wires. <laughs> and actually, it is important, because if you have bad wire sort of technique, you're going to get, lysis, loosening, infection, and, that, yeah. and the cycle of doom yes. continues. Um, so good technique, good pin site care. I don't mind then if they're near the joint. Right. Generally, this technique is kind of called screws high, wires low. Yeah. So you've got the metaphyseal segment, you've got the screws for the joint reduction, and then we're using the wires for our metaphyseal. And that goes down to your thing of like, if the screws are not quite high enough, you might. now where do you put your wires? Exactly. You either put them really close to the joint, in which case that, exactly. that gives you anxiety, or just too low, so they're not really controlling the exactly. frame. Exactly. And, and mechanically, uh, it, not, not quite right, but if you imagine that you've got a periarticular plate and you've got a cluster of screws in the metaphysis and then you're going to kind of give yourself near far in the diaphysis with your screws, this is going to do the same job. I've got a cluster of wires up in the metaphysis and then I'm going to put a couple of rings distally near yeah. far and that's the fixation. Great. I try and get three or four wires on my ring that's in the articulate and yeah. I give myself a diamond construct, it holds it really nicely. I've crossed to the femur here. Yeah, I saw I, that. I don't yeah. normally do that actually anymore. Um, it's It does protect your fixation, but actually I like to get them going more. Yeah. And then um, you'll notice that there, uh, there may well be a half pin, then I've certainly got a couple of arch wires in the tuberosity there. Okay, so you've got some fixation going yeah. on here. So they're Is in the tuberosity, pulling back and holding it in place. Uh, okay, okay, fine. And then the, the frame here, that certainly when I do a frame, from a really simplistic point of view, I, I use the rods to make sure they're lined up with the axis of the tibia, because if yeah. that's lined up with the axis of the tibia, and then the ring at the top is orthogonal with the joint, or parallel with the joint rather, Boom. I'm pretty confident then my alignment's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, because I mean the, the next question of, the of course coming from me is, is why not do a TSF? I don't, so for or, me. Or, or, sorry, a hexapod, I should yeah, say. Yeah, so for me, for an acute fracture, if the bone's wobbly, I can put it back in the right place, then I want the benefit of an all wire or, or pretty good, just a simple ring fixator. They're yeah. lighter, they're sleeker, you don't need the correction because I've got them lined up on the table, they're cheaper, the rings are thinner, uh, it's just an easier job. I, I, yeah. Nowadays, I, I wouldn't put the half pin in the diaphyseal side. I, I, that's an old habit. You wouldn't have bought that. No, I go for all wire in an acute fracture nowadays, and they heal pretty quick. Okay, immediate weight bearing. Yeah. Great. How long does that bridging segment stay over the knee? Six weeks or so. Yeah. Um, but as I say, I, I don't tend to bridge the knee anymore. Yeah, great, okay. All right, and, and that's, that's it uh, when you took the frame. So how yeah. does that frame stay on for? So that frame was on for probably about six months, maybe seven, you know, yeah. pretty big bone area to fill in. And yeah. it's a really difficult judgment call taking yeah, a frame off. Because yeah. you, you look at all this and you go, is that healed? Yeah. I have no idea. You don't know, so you dynamise it in clinic a bit, you loosen some nuts, you rattle your spanners around, you yeah, pretend yeah. you know what you're doing, it's all yeah. sort of conjecture. And that goes into a Sarmiento for a bit, does it? Or? Yeah, sometimes, or you just, you've, if you've really dynamised the frame and you've even taken some struts out, for a week or two before they come to have it off. If yeah. they haven't moved, I just let them go. Right, right, okay. And that's what it ends up looking <coughs> like. Yeah. It looks, looks great. So um, a little bit, of, little bit of increased posterior tilt maybe of the yep. joint, but not a bad result from that injury. And yeah. it's pretty well lined up. Nice one. Take home message, <coughs> massive, uh, massive uh, metaphyseal comminution with so big soft tissue injuries, yeah. so almost circumferentially, where you're nervous about plating, Frame is a great solution. Yeah, I think it? so. I mean, I, I, I love fixing stuff, and I think the more and more I do, the less I like to put frames on people, but I think this is one of the good indications in acute fracture surgery. Awesome. Awesome. Cheers, buddy. Thanks. No worries. Thank you for having Shaska me. Shaska 6. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> love it.